Thank you guys, and I just want to say, I think we have a great election season, I think everyone got a message out there, community got involvement, so I think this is all good. Um, I just wanted to make a quick note on something that came in that isn't on the agenda, I, I don't know if it's going to be covered, um, but having to do with the letters from the environmental health and from regional water, water quality control. Um, I think we talked about these letters before and maybe there was some hope from some folks and dread from other folks about those letters going to come in and tell us exactly what we have to do. But I think really optimistically, right, they don't tell us what they have to do. And I think this is cool because I think we may be at an inflection point. We've got this election. We've got things turning in whatever direction they're going. And I think what we're being told by the regulators is really positive. They're saying what we know, right? They're saying, well, if you have sites that are less than two and a half acres, you probably don't want to have them on septic. And they want us to do it, right, if we want to continue to have local control. But they're not saying it needs to be gravity fed, they're not saying what site it needs to be on, they're not saying that it, it, that it needs to be anything, right? They're just saying we should get it together and do it. So I think this is very positive. I also want to note that there were comments that there'd been a survey. And what I saw from the survey is that people wanted small and they wanted less contention. So I think this is a beautiful time for us to try and use the democratic process to go with small and less contentious. Um, so thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Uh, next speaker is Michelle Weir. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Public transparency and commitment to best practices generate confidence and trust in our public boards. You are a public agency. I received highly redacted legal invoices, legal invoices from your attorney this week. It appears to me you have a lot to hide. It's been six years since the hard-fought local control Los Olivos Community Service <coughs> District was formed. To date, no local groundwater testing has been performed. Only, the only groundwater data available is 50 years old. And the board has been enlarging the sewer plan located outside of the district boundary, boundary with no community input. I reviewed all the LOCSD community member updates posted on the website. I will highlight three updates. Number one, October 23rd of 2019, the update is not on the website. Why was it taken down? It talks about the project description approved in August or, on August 14th, 2019, and thanked everyone who attended the workshops and submitted comments and suggestions. Excuse me, can anybody have eye contact? Please continue. 
In the update, it, it, it outlines the next steps, which included implement a, a local groundwater monitoring program to measure existing and future nitrates in our groundwater. An additional next step was to launch environmental studies for phase one collection and treatment. The phase one priority being the downtown core and small lots. Second update was December 2020. That's on the website. It focuses, it says our focus remains developing resident guidelines for on-site water treatment systems as well as permitting a phase one collection treatment system for the downtown core and securing grants to help for all phases to the work. And, and in that report, they also thank Joan Hartman for facilitating the process to access the St. Mark's and Maddie's Tavern uh, site for phase one. Then you fast forward seven months to July 2021. Our focus remains twofold. Remains is the word I, I, I highlight. Provide updated on-site treatment guidelines for property owners during the transition from on-site sewer on-site treatment to sewer. Site design number two, site design and permit a collection <coughs> treatment system that will serve the entire community in a timely fashion. During, I guess, that meeting, that's when President Palmer at the time said, hallelujah, during the meeting. No more mention of phased approach starting with the downtown four. No more mention of local groundwater monitoring to measure existing and future nitrates. When were the workshops for the community to provide input on the radical change in course direction to sewer the whole town and building the sewage treatment plant outside of the district, making our sewage our neighbor's problem? This is not very kind behavior. Putting a sewage treatment plant on, work. on I think speaker. they started too early, on the, fam, fam, on the Valley the Scenic work. Highways outside the of the district is not good for families and it's hostile. Next speaker. <laughs> uh, thank you, Catherine Rohr. Uh, we live in the Ballard Adobes. Um, and I just wanted to, I'm not sure, I never am clear on what the policy is on commenting on your comments. So I wanted to say I saw in um, General Manager Savage's update some references to um, your meetings on Monday with EHS and with county planning. And it's really been nice to see President Fahram's expression of interest um, and really understanding what controls, if any, the CSD is gonna be able to access to control growth and density and sprawl, et cetera. Um, and I hope that that's something that you're gonna share with us tonight, what you learned in those meetings. Um, I note, however, that zoning is wholly subject to the whims of the county supervisors. So we all know that big money developers can get zoning changed in order to bring in just about any kind of project, even over the objection of community members. We're seeing it right now in this county and in this valley, with cannabis operations, high density housing projects, and the like. With sewer infrastructure, it's entirely true that if you build it, they will come. And this is why I continue to hope the board will return to work on a small system in and for the downtown with supportive financing for advanced on-site systems for the larger parcels. Thank you. Our next speaker is Julie Kennedy. Um, thank you, and thank you all for your service, and thank you for everyone who came out to vote. Really appreciate, and it's good that you all got active and stood up. Um, I think really, I just want really, really simply, I think regardless of where you live, in the district or out of the district, I think we can all agree, we actually are all more in agreement than not. No one wants a sewer. No one stood up and said, heck yeah, man, bring me a sewer. No one wants unbridled growth or McMansions popping up everywhere. Nobody definitely wants the county coming in and telling us, uh, or putting a solution in, because we know what that will look like. You guys all talked, a few of you talked about the super size thing. Well, guess what, that's what you will get. And I think and everybody wants to keep our community, um, this great community feel that we have, the, the rural feel, the neighborly respect that we all have for each other. So there's a lot of work to be done. I think uh, with the election and that being said, I think it would be really helpful. Everybody park your pitchfork at the door. Instead, come in armed with a pen, a paper, even a phone, because it's gonna take all of us to really make this happen. There's a lot of work to be done. 
Um, we luckily have a lot of options, and it could be uh, and configurations, and that's the work that the board will be doing here coming up, especially in preparation for the workshop. Um, and last I said, like, just again, let's just try to put all of our personal differences aside and work together, because we will suffer, all of us will suffer if the county does end up coming in with something. It, it won't be pretty, it won't be small, and they'll probably take the opportunity to sewer up Ballard alongside with it, and, and we will have what we don't want, so anyway. Our final public speaker is Mike Brady. Well, thank you. You know, first of all, uh, I really want to say thank you to the current board and to the people that have been on the board in the past and to all of the people that have put the time and effort into running for election. Uh, that's what our community is about. And I've talked to most of you. And I know you are a part of this community and you are as much at stake as I am. So I trust that you are not going to try to do something underhanded or devious to our community. You're here. I've lived in the Valley for 45 years. I've lived in Los Olivos for 10. I'm gonna be here. Nobody wants to bring development into this community. Nobody. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because we resolve our septic and affluent systems problems. Um, I do have, there's been a number of people, so basically, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. There's been a, a lot of people that have uh, circulated things like that there is a proposed sewer system that has the capacity of two to seven times the amount that our district would need. Uh, I don't know if any of you care to comment on that and that uh, the state, State Water Regional Quality Control Board, I think it is, and the county environmental health are not in the background pushing this system and us making a resolution to this. And if we don't do this, those two entities will take over our septic and affluent situation for us. I don't know if you care to comment on any of that, but. That's, it's thank you, and we're all working together, and I don't see anybody trying to put in any system that is more than what we need, period. Thank you, Mr. Green. Yes, I have two online, two online, Henry Gott. Ms. Gott. And you're on mute. Hi, I was, hi, I'm on my phone because I didn't think that last time I was able to leave a, a great um, comment. Could you? We can hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I can't hear you, so hang on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have uh, two things. Uh, the first thing is, is that we actually do have through the county um, a housing element workshop that is going to be happening um, this month. And I think that really if anyone is interested in what is happening at the county as it is related to uh, the town of Los Olivos and the growth that they are looking to um, actually um, uh, plan for, they need to actually go to this housing element workshop. It's in person, but it's at also online and it's on November the 16th. So people really need to, you know, Google that. Uh, it's the North County housing element workshop for, um, for, for Santa Barbara County. Um, now getting back to uh, Los Olivos, I just want to let you know that 
Earlier this week, I had the um, opportunity to attend the Citizens Planning Association's um, week, uh, me, monthly webinar. Um, they had um, Mike Pratter from um, LAFCO being interviewed. I was able to ask a number of questions as it was, was related to Los Olivos' community service district, as well as Ballard. And what I found um, through asking some questions was that once Los Olivos has a, um, a wastewater treatment facility, LAFCO can apply to actually have uh, Ballard merged into Los Olivos' um, district. And Los Olivos does not get a say. As long as LAFCO makes the decision that one, Los Olivos has the capacity or it could have, have by expanding its treatment facility, have the capacity to serve Ballard, that it will then merge Ballard with Los Olivos and the only way that Los Olivos residents would be able to do anything about that is if they took LAFCO to court because there is no appeal. So as we are discussing the various options for Los Olivos, I really think that we need to also have an analysis of what LAFCO could do if they could actually expand forcibly uh, our wastewater treatment facility to include uh, Ballard, and if the sites that we are looking at would allow that. Um, I've always said we need something small, the decentralized, um, you know, uh, you, uh, wastewater treatment facilities, I really think are the best ones. Thank you. So Scott. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one more, uh, one more. Mark Rizal. Mark Rizal. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, congratulations to those uh, who were voted in last night. Um, it was great to see the doc be able to happen on the local level. Um, and uh, I would uh, kind of echo, um, I, I, I've told some of you guys that I'm not as concerned with what you guys did over the past year or two, but it's where do you go from here, um, the decision making that we make uh, from here. That I, I sent a letter out a couple weeks ago and uh, to, to my email list and got a number of responses. I think it was pretty clear that uh, quite a few of the people that uh, were responding want to make sure that we don't lose the character of Los Olivos or progressive water. When I think I mentioned in that letter, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but that this CSD really needs to act and think like a, like a town council because it's all we've got in Los Olivos. Um, so I would just encourage, you know, looking at the engineering, but also looking at, you know, these other issues that uh, may come with uh, a wastewater plant that's too large for Los Olivos. Um, and I think, you know, there, the temperature has been raised um, in town. You guys are all aware of that. In an election, hopefully be, this is a bit of a reset um, and th that you guys will take steps to show the community that you are looking at some of these other options. I know last, last month you, you talked about looking at some, but I think if you, if you look at these other options aggressively uh, and with, with uh, enthusiasm uh, and come to the community with some of these these different options to, to talk about and consider and have discussion, I think I think that'll pull our community together, um, which is what, what needs to happen to be successful. And, um, you know, and I think we, the board has to be honest with itself that you were in the transition with leadership and you're all just board members. You didn't, you didn't have Guy in there until seven months ago or whatever it was, six months ago. And, you know, that engineering study got out of hand. You ended up with something that was not what uh, it should have been. And I think the board has to own that and that there were certainly enough things that kind of were being unmanaged mismanaged or being directed by another influence outside the, the town that you got to kind of own that and that you know people reacted accordingly but how you move forward now is that'll determine success or not and um, you know just kind of taking off our, our our hats of all of the, the bias we may have and looking at these different options bringing the community together will be successful in most of those so uh, and I would encourage not to push forward with this environmental thing. Lisa keeps pushing for this environmental deal. I've heard it two, two, two times now, and I don't know why you want to start environmental before you actually have a defined project. So uh, the signals that you guys send to people that attend a lot of meetings and have been to a lot of county and governmental meetings, you're sending signals, you've sent signals that there's one option. 
and that raises the temperature, and that will result in people taking legal action. So I think it's really in your hands right now. Wait, wait till you got a couple new board members on board to make any major decisions, and let's do this right, build a community, and let's be transparent with the community. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. I heard my, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. That concludes public comment. We'll move on to uh, director comments, and I'll start to my right with uh, Director Nelson. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for the uh, participation in the election. Uh, unfortunately, I did not prevail, but I'm still going to be involved. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving. I'm just <laughs> going to be on the other side of this table again. So uh, I thank you. Um, I would like to echo what uh, Mr. Hertel said. I think this is a perfect time for us to do a reset, to look at things and kind of look forward instead of looking back. Uh, I also attended uh, uh, via Zoom the same meeting that uh, Ms. Gott attended, and I got pretty much the same thing out of it that she did. I, I was uh, I learned a lot about LAPCO that I thought I already knew, but I didn't. I learned more. Um, I also from the two letters that they didn't surprise me from uh, EHS or the uh, RQ W. <laughs> they simply said what I had said before that they are just going to approve it or disapprove it. They're not going to tell us like a building permit. You go, you don't go to them, and the planning department doesn't tell you what building they want you to build. You show them what you want to build, and they tell you if it can be built or not. And so that's what that does. So I think it's an opportunity for all of us to take a deep breath and move forward. I got the impression from my last meeting that we were moving towards the STEP program, looking at those, and that the gravity sewer was just one of the options that were being looked at, and that now it's a shift to, to uh, workshops that will be looking at the other. So I, I, I would hope that we can just give it a chance, see if we can get off onto a better footing, and see where this other goes. I shared a lot of the comments, and I got those same comments from people throughout this period when I was sitting in the park, most of the time alone. But <laughs> those that came by and talked, I did have some positive feedback and, and comments. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Darling. I have none. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to everyone who participates in the process, and thank you, Mike, for your service over the last four years. And thank you, Tom, for your service these last two months. Two months. Two meetings. <laughs> a few meetings um, that I do. You know, we've had some good conversations over the last few months, and I look forward to uh, you know carrying on uh, that dialogue. And I also I'm excited because we've had an incredible amount of engagement, and we need folks to stay engaged going into this next phase. So thank you, you know, democracy's messy and loud, but it's a great system and, um, you know, we, we have the result and now we all need to come together and move forward. Um, I would like to say too on the, I, I agree with Mr. Rohr on the EHS and the water board letters. They're good news for us. So, you know, it's got a framework in there, but it's a framework that I think they've telegraphed what, <laughs> you know, how, how we need to move forward or how we can move forward. Um, as a district and as a community. So um, the other thing is on the housing element update. Um, that is on my radar. The county posted, they have a new interactive map that shows you where they are looking at rezones. Um, if you can look at Los Olivos, they showed the area that was studied, which is just in the downtown area, but there's nothing proposed um, as of now. So again, that is, you know, we don't have jurisdiction over zoning, but obviously um, county county planning um, and does. So I do encourage everyone to be engaged in that process as well. So I think that's it. Thanks. Dr. Ross. I've been involved with engineering work for a number of decades and involved with studies for innovative things, new things. And what I've learned is that the process involves looking at options. And so 
sometimes the options aren't that great, but you still look at them so that you can compare between different choices and come up with what the real answer, the best answer is. And so I was not on the board when the decision was made to do a study that involved a number of zones, including the entire district, but I thought it was a great idea. And I still do, because we learned a lot. We have numbers. It's one thing to say, well, we think that'll be too expensive or whatever, but we have numbers on those different zones for the gravity system. And I understand that other systems are looking at that study as they think about their system, like a step system. So I think it was money well spent. It never was that we were pursuing the big plan. That was never part of that process. We were looking at different options. And also we had heard that there may be funding if we have a, a larger sphere of influence with our treatment system. So there were really good reasons to do everything. I think it's great that we have that information. Am I in favor for a district-wide system? No, but I'm so glad to look at it. So I hope we can get past all that and realize that over the next few months, we've got to put together the best options. And also look at the ones that aren't so great, but just make sure that everyone can see what we've looked at, what's good, what's bad, so that we can end up with the very best system we can have. So I hope that all of us, including you all, can stay engaged enough to be in a position to understand the trade-offs so that we can come up with something that will prevail in, in an election. Thank you, Dr. Ross. Um, I have a couple of comments. I think I uh, would like to uh, start off by also thanking Eric Army. Um, joined our board. You have a level of expertise that helped us through this and, and uh, I hope uh, that you'll stay involved as well because you, you have too much too much knowledge there to uh, to uh, ignore. So thank you for, for, for that very much. Um, thank you, Director Nelson. Um, we first met a long time ago when you had a, a letter. Well, not, not that long ago, but and I asked you to get involved in run for the board. You did and I appreciate you taking that initiative. And, and doing that, we talked before the meeting and encouraged you to stay involved and you said you would do that too, so thank you for that. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about, we did have a meeting with uh, Environmental Health Services and p and I requested that uh, Supervisor Hartman convene that because I uh, hope it's not a surprise to everybody that I've been very concerned about what um, the planning department would do when you have a sewer system. I've talked about that for a long time, especially with ADUs. And um, so we had a, a call and um, I think the planning department is getting um, <clears throat> additional information because my, my main question is, is if we design a sewer treatment plant to basically what we have now, can they go ahead and approve development even though we don't have capacity? I would think the answer to that is no. I mean, doesn't that make sense to everybody that they couldn't do that? I don't know if that's the case, or, and I think and that, that's not judging either way. I don't know if they can if they can do that uh, or not. Uh, and um, I think ADUs might be even um, uh, trickier on how that's viewed as well. So um, I'm going to keep working and try to get pinned down so that the community will understand for the downtown commercial and for the residential exactly what. Um, what the planning department and EHS can do when there when there's a system that, that's really important information. Um, last comment I want to make is um, uh, something to what uh, Mr. Herthel uh, uh, said in this um, in his last public comment and, and discussions that we've had with him. I appreciate I've met with uh, Mr. Herthel off and on for I think since we formed, and I, I appreciate his insight. He. Uh, has made several comments about my being an engineer and close to other um, other options. Okay, I guess that you, that, that, that can fair enough. You can say that. I, I I like to think there's a little bit of not truth to that. Maybe a little bit of truth. Um, obviously, engineering you go with what what works, 
and uh, tried and true for hundreds of years, and, but I am intrigued with the step system. Um, but I want to know more, and not from a salesman. If someone comes and says, hey, we have a step system for you, we think it's great, you should do that, no. Uh, that's not, a, so the engineering part of me, and maybe if I even lump Director Ross into that, is I want to know from a professional, what is the right answer uh, you know, to this? Is a step system the best approach? Is a gravity system the, 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 you know, the best approach? Um, you know, I think um, we're going to be hearing more about getting more information on that, and then ultimately, you know, this is a community decision. But so on the one hand, let's be open to new, um, uh, new options and new processes for sure. But then on the other hand, let's not be uh, totally blind to the fact that we need to make the right decision too, and not something that um, you know somebody else says is good. Uh, somebody who works for us and says, well, we think that this is this is a good option. So. It's a good thing, um, and Mr. Hurtel, if you're still on, I look forward to uh, meeting with you more in the future and, and accepting your uh, uh, your criticism and your encouragement because I think you've given me both, and I appreciate that. Um, so I think it comes with love. <laughs> and so uh, with that, um, we will move on to uh, general manager and district engineer comments. Uh, can I add one thing? I sure. I collected all the yard signs, and if you have some, the high school art department's going to take them to reuse them. I have a bunch in my van. So anybody that has them, let me know. I'll come pick them up. I went out today and got a lot of them. It's just something I thought was good for the community, and that we found a place that they will use them and reuse them. So thank you. Well, as a past employee of the Public Works Department, recycle, reuse, reduce. Good, good job. Let's do that. I believe you. Okay, um, Mr. Savage. Would you mind starting with the uh, with uh, okay? Um, we'll go to uh, Mr. Pike, District Engineer, for any comments. Well, why don't you come up front here, Doug, if you would? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have anything real specific, but I just in the spirit of what's being said, uh, I've really enjoyed working with the board and. Uh, Look forward to continue working. I've been involved in looking at options here since actually 2008. I wrote the I worked for the county in creating the wastewater management plan in 2010, and always have just uh, addressed options and taken direction. And um, there's a good spirit, good feeling here today, and so hopefully there will be uh, moving forward and open discussion. And, I endorse the idea of doing what's best for the community combined with what is economical and what will work in the long term and be cost effective and uh, easy to maintain and has the best of all those factors we want. And I'm available if you have any questions on anything current. Thank you, Doug. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. How about now? Mm -hmm. Better? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark or Anne Marie, can you make sure you can hear me okay? Can hear you fine. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Um, so, as per my usual uh, approach, I've got uh, several things that I want to share with, with the board tonight um, in the public. So, let's let this one come up. Um, for those not in the room, uh, our projector is still not working, so we're using a much smaller TV. In some ways, it's probably clearer, uh, but it's much smaller. Uh, but hopefully, folks can see it well enough. All right. So. Um, I'm going to start with uh, the roadmap because this is kind of the high level picture of where we're at uh, and what's going on. Um, this is slightly updated from what you saw last month. Uh, basically took a month off and, and reworked a couple of dates as to where things are. So quickly just spinning you through this. So this month, here we are, row six is a quarterly update. Um, I'm well into uh, finishing that. I expect to get it out in the next week or two. Um, next month, and we'll talk about dates of these things uh, in open session in, in, uh, as part of item 7B, but um, still plan to give a state of district uh, presentation. That'll be an open meeting. 
um, Q and A with presentation for me. It's, it's different than a normal board meeting. It doesn't have to follow the, the same Brown Act rules that we follow in very structured meetings. It's much more like a workshop. Uh, we've been talking for some time, and this is highlighted pretty heavily in the upcoming update. We are planning for three to four, maybe even five workshops in the January February timeline. So you can see those listed here, um, and then. Um, it looks like now, this just as of a couple of days ago, this is, is probably going to happen in January. It might still happen in December, but it looks like it's going to be January now before Environmental Health and the Water Board come. They will talk about their two uh, letters. They'll talk about their role. We'll talk about the lamp, for those who are familiar with that, um, and the potential addendum to the lamp that uh, would be unique to our community. And I'm closing is 11. So now I'm going to slide down. So that's kind of the, the board and public education side of things. Um, then sliding down to the engineering design side. So we've talked before, we're at the 30% design with Stantec. Um, now we put the 60% on hold while we look at the step design. So let me take a little sidebar here on the step design. So at the last board meeting, the board asked me to get a hold of Stantec and see if they had the engineering capability and capacity to um, do a kind of a 30% design on step, potentially using the remaining funds from the 30% design for gravity fed. Um, at this point, they do not have that capacity. Um, and quite honestly, they said we might save some money by just working directly with Orenco. Um, apparently, Orenco often will do much of the engineering and then work with the firm right at the end to have an engineer go through it, give an engineer stamp of approval, and move on. So uh, to that end, I took took the uh, opportunity to work with Steve Brayman from Biosolutions. Um, I've been out gathering some information that Steve wanted in particular uh, to be able to get his engineers to look at things kind of at the next step. Um, no pun intended, sorry. Um, the 30% kind of a, of a level. Um, so we are looking at that, um, and I've got a, an additional meeting. Uh, many of you will remember uh, Nick, and forgive me if I mispronounced his last name, Legal or Weigel from North Star, who was here I think it was July, it might have been June, um, he came and gave a presentation about, uh, about you know, STEP and other solutions. I have a conversation scheduled with Nick on Friday to see if there's something he might be able to do in this regard, um, just because, again, he has a lot of history with these sorts of systems. So um, more to come on that. I'll uh, clearly, obviously, report out on it in December. At this point, I do not have consultant for you to be able to do a 30% design kind of an operation or, or activity. Um, however, um, as, I, as I was going around looking for somebody that could do that, I also spoke to MD5, who's our assessment engineer firm. Um, keep in mind, MD5 is a very large engineering firm. Um, Jeff Cooper, who has been working as our assessment engineer, he did the financial modeling for us, which we'll be talking about. Um, went to another part of his company. They, they do engineering on uh, step system, uh, sewer systems all up and down the state, um, across the entire West Coast. In fact, they're working on a couple of them that have been pointed out to me, 29 Palms and some others. Um, so I had a conversation with them this morning. Um, and uh, we got into a conversation about um, viability of step versus gravity fed. Um, so I asked, um, um, Jeff Cooper, who's the vice president over this particular division, um, to give me a, a quote and a, a kind of a what it would provide for us um, to kind of give us a, a, as much of a comparison from a, an independent, completely independent, right? They're not involved in any of the past um, engineering firm that would say, okay, here's what you would be looking at with step in your community, as, you know, making the assumptions that you know you'd have to make some about how much of the residents and the commercial core would be done versus uh, the gravity fed solution. So they're going to provide me with a, a quote and a kind of a scope of work to, to do a compare contrast for us from a completely independent engineering firm. Um, so I should get that uh, probably in the next couple of days. If that's something your board wants me to work on, um, when I'm done with my comments, I'd love to hear some more on that from you. Um, so Effluent disposal. Um, so this, of course, is the, the contract, and you see this when I get to my data support. But this is the contract with GSI and Confluence CS. Yes. Um, we met uh, the, the two organizations, myself um, and uh, Mr. Pike and some others, uh, Water Board and, and EHS folks, met to talk about 
their five options, understand if there were any big red flags from the regulators um, as they continue to work through their design. We do anticipate seeing um, their, remember they're looking at five options, um, their report here either very late this month or very, very early next, next month because they are on the calendar to be here in December to describe for us the five options they examined, give us some of the pros and cons, and ultimately make a recommendation based on their understanding of our project at this point. Um, modeling, I mentioned that a moment ago. So um, we did not, uh, due to some scheduling issues, we did not have an opportunity to speak with the Finance Committee and the Assessment Engineer. Um, that is upcoming as well. So we'll bring the Assessment Engineer back at the appropriate time. Um, if we choose to in the future, we could look at that as assessment engineer, including some benefit factors. Of course, some of this is as we get um, these next few items, there's, we get into 2023, looking at what the property owners would have to pay, finalizing siting, final site acquisition plan, final product description, all that sort of stuff going on. There was discussion um, also, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm pulling out in some the project contract um, about the environmental. Um, I've, I've, as I've gone back and forth with, with that contract and spoke to Padre, um, I want to be sure that we're bringing forward the right contract for what we want them to do, um, not just a, a sort of a semi-can uh, contract based on uh, too many assumptions about what it is they'll be doing an environmental study on. I think the big question for me on that one is, um, uh, do we wait until we get well into our workshop and let them just do an environmental study on what comes out of the workshops as we get to, you know, basically to our project description, or do I try and bring something to your board before then, such that if we want them to, they can participate or at least listen in to the workshops that we're going to have in January and February. So uh, I'll be tossing that one back and forth to the present there, and I'm going to need a little bit of uh, more guidance on that one as well. And then off the bottom here, getting into grants and financing, um, these several things out in, in early 2023. Um, we've been submitting uh, for our reimbursements from, for the HS grants. Um, just engineer Pike is working on the draft report. Um, that's slipped into to early November here. Um, so I think we're essentially on track with that. It should be going out there very shortly. Um, coming then down to the monitoring wells. So uh, as you may recall from the last meeting, for those who were here or listened or um, we decided not to just drill one well. We were going to try and drill two wells. Um, I do have, I walked uh, the community around the, the places where we're going to be drilling the wells. Um, the plan is to begin as soon as next week. Um, I do have a couple of the little notices that I gave to people here uh, with me if somebody wants a copy of them. Essentially for those who, uh, uh, I can bring it up actually, why don't I do that? Um, so, uh, this is the, the notice I gave to people, uh, and if that's big enough for people to make it a little bigger if I can. Better? There we go. So you can see well number one here is basically on the bend of Ballard Canyon after you come off of what is, I've always known as railway, railway um, and you turn on to Ballard Canyon kind of up in that corner up there. Um, I would note that the district boundary is just kind of right here, right? Um, so that's kind of the, the northwest corner. And then the other one is way over here, um, kind of in that dirt lot. Uh, this was discussion last time about, uh, I believe somebody said that, that area right there might be um, strewn with other things beyond just uh, the things that, that we're testing for. But um, it is planned for somewhere in that, that area there. And again, the, the plan is that this, the construction will begin uh, next week. Um, and this was just a, a notice I handed to the people in the area, the businesses, I walk the businesses in here and the homes over here so that if anybody had any questions, they know what we're up to. Um, I gave them a copy of this flyer and like I said, if somebody wants a copy, I've got a few here. Um, we did decide there's some things in there that are probably beyond this. Um, Hi. Yeah. Question. Do you have the depth as well? Yes. So um, the, the wells will be up to or around 150 feet deep um, and that will get us into that shallow aquifer in, in such a way that we can get proper measurements. Um, so those will get drilled um, and then we'll take the first samples and, and get those uh, off to testing. The funding and, and the rest of the remainder of the wells after that uh, kind of on. So that's, that's sort of the high level roadmap. Um, board, before I go on 
Mr. President, your, your choice. I can pause there or just keep going ahead. It's up to you. Well, we can pause for any questions from the board on what you talked about so far. Okay. Great. So then the next thing I want to talk about is the um, this project status report. This is the same one that I've been trying to be consistent with how I'm presenting this. So I just talked about the monitoring wells. Um, we're going to actually, this should now be yellow. We're going to be a little bit over budget uh, with the monitoring wells, not from the $50,000 your board authorized me to sign a contract for with BCC last month. Um, what, we, what I neglected to consider is we're now doing two wells, and we've had the contract with GSI for over two years, and they've been working slowly on that. So the amount of funding we had set aside for GSI to do their part of this is going to go over budget. I think it's not going to be huge, but it will be $2,000. Um, so that should be yellow. I should have a, a clear calculation on that um, by the time we get uh, back here for next month. Uh, I mentioned the effluent study. They're on track. They will be here in December. Um, uh, the initial assessment models have been received. Again, the Finance Committee uh, is meeting with them. Is that tomorrow on Friday? I think it's Friday. Um, one that, that uh, had somewhat fallen off the radar maybe for, for some is our audit. Remember, we signed a contract a couple of months ago with Moss Lady and Hartstein. Um, I spoke with Alex, our um, CPA that's going to be doing our work. Um, he's looking at the week of December 19th uh, to begin the work. Uh, so just want to make sure that's on people's radar. Um, then just the other things, you know, I've been working on PRAs. I've uh, had some follow-up to the six-month retrospective. I think everybody in the room, um, and I'll show you the results of the communication survey I sent out. Um, I used that information um, particularly to draft the 2023 calendar, which is item 7B this evening. Um, I think we know that we received the letters. We've talked enough about those. Both of those letters, the DHS and the Regional Quality Control Board uh, letters are posted on uh, on the website. Um, uh, being pushed now to January, as I mentioned earlier, I think. Um, that's actually a pretty good time because now, you know, that'll be just right before we get into the workshops. So you'll be able to hear from the two regulated organizations and then go into the workshop. So it'll help build that foundation and then we can talk about um, choosing choosing options and how to evaluate them best. Um, would note that President Fagram and I did meet with the HS independently uh, to, to briefly discuss their letter. Um, the commentary that you heard earlier tonight basically covers uh, our comments to them as well. Nothing, nothing I do to report out of that discussion. Um, I think I already talked about this. Um, I, I mentioned all the stuff related to staff already. The only thing that I hadn't mentioned thus far is I've pinged uh, Presby, which is the, the other kind of Third solution we were kind of somewhat looking at for treatment, um, they continue to not respond, so I'm going to just give up. I'm not going to continue to try and trust them to respond. That was a solution that, um, to me, you could liken to a very, very large bleach field where all the effluent solids and everything would just go to a very large bleach field. Um, perhaps it could have been under a few acres of you know soil, just you know everything, but um, not hearing back from them, they don't seem to be engaging, so I'm going to give them off. Um, and President Bayer already mentioned the meeting we have with DHS and planning and development. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about, I'm sorry, before I go on, uh, questions on that one? Well, just the other uh, option you're talking about, solids and effluent into a leach field? Basically, it's a, a, a very large septic tank, yeah. much like we have today. Yeah. Um, on a much more grand scale. Yeah. 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 With different materials, normally you don't want the solids there, but okay. Yeah, that's that's how their solution handles it. Um, so this is the, the option sheet. Uh, this particular view shows it focuses primarily on the cost. Um, so as we've been saying, um, you know, gravity fed. Here's here's the capital cost just for the collection side. For step, this is the estimates we received from Bio Solutions, meaning Arenco. Um, Here's the cost for MBR. Um, I have spoken again to Flosina about are there any significant reductions in the cost for an MBR plant if we use STEP? Um, they're evaluating it, but at least their initial review is not enough to really be concerned about at this point, not at a kind of an early engineering design perspective. They said, yeah, in the end, you might save a couple hundred thousand dollars, but it's not going to be a couple of million dollars. So 
Um, they're going to continue looking at it, um, but nothing really to, to compare NDR with gravity bed versus NDR with this step. And then this last one is the thing we were just talking about, the passive uh, next-gen Elgin Presby Delta system. Um, they never got that through, so I'm going to move on from that. I think um, the only other thing here is, of course, we're continuing to monitor the advanced onsite. I took these numbers out of the, uh, the EHS letter. Um, they, they basically said an advanced onsite system for a individual homeowner is somewhere between $1,500 and $1,900 a year. So beginning to fill some of this in, um, hopefully it's, it's helpful. Uh, nothing else that I can recall changed in this. So on to the survey slides then real quick. Um, let me just show them this way. I think it's probably just as big. Um, so a number of people talked about the housing element. I pulled this off the housing element, uh, the county's website today. Um, if, here's the link, and I'll, I'll be posting this with the minutes, uh, although you can certainly go out, just go to the county's planning and building uh, website. Um, there are actually two workshops. Uh, you're welcome to attend either. Uh, there's one Wednesday of next week on the 16th. The other is on Thursday, the 17th. Um, I was told that you know the, the North County one um, that will be on the 16th is probably more appropriate to us and a little more focused on this. But you can, if you for some reason you can't attend on the 16th, attend on the 17th. So we'll add for them. Um, so then quickly on to the survey results. Um, this is as of about 11 o'clock this morning. We received 70 report responses. Most people want to continue to just get things via email. We did see some U.S. Postal Service. Um, some text. Keep in mind that this is people that have signed up for an email to get an email, so <laughs> it makes sense that you might see a few more answer with email, right? And um, I will say that uh, I'm a little concerned that um, we're not necessarily hitting, and uh, Greg Palmer and I had a conversation about this earlier today, we may not be hitting the property owners effectively with emails. And so uh, I think it's probably time to reach out to the county tax collector's office and get the current list of the addresses for property owners within the district so we can make sure they're being engaged. In particular, as we head into these workshops, right? So get them engaged now and let them know the workshops are coming. And probably the best way to do that will be some sort of mail because we don't have, I suspect, emails for a lot of those folks. Um, if we were to host workshops, which we're going to, um, which dates are best for people? Uh, Wednesday came out as, uh, on top. Tuesday uh, in second place and Thursday. So clearly we should be looking at least for the 74 people that responded to this survey um, at the middle of the week. Uh, avoiding Fridays in particular. Um, yeah. <laughs> Saturdays are, are a, a, a not so distant, but it's a little bit of a distant for us. Um, this one I found really interesting. So how often would you like to get email updates? We've been sending them quarterly. Um, this suggests that something on a monthly basis would be appreciated by at least 74 of the people who responded, over half of them. Um, so might be something to, to consider. Um, if nothing else, maybe just a short blast that's a, a recap of the meeting or something. I'll, I'll spend some time thinking about that, um, trying to keep it short in the amount of time I have to spend to put it together, but getting the information out to the public. Um, if you receive text, almost 57% of the people said, I don't want to get text, so um, I think we can skip on from that one. 67%, uh, a little over two-thirds, uh, said, I don't, I don't do social media, so don't send me anything on Twitter. Um, if we had district hours, not surprisingly, people said Monday through Friday, they were kind of, eh, Friday, you can, you can maybe take a pass on Fridays, but clearly earlier in the week. Um, and then I'm not going to read the comments. I've got two pages of comments here. Um, I will say, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and post this sooner rather than later so people can see the comments. Um, where uh, an individual's name was pointed out, I, I blackened it out just to, to be kind. I think it was appropriate to, to keep people's names in here. Um, if it was a board member, sorry, I left your name. Um, but if somebody in the public was called out, I don't think that public calling out public would be something like that. Makes sense. So um, lots of good comments, I think. Um, you know, Workshops, you know, I think we've, we've heard about where we're focusing. Um, you know, there's, there's comments all over the place. And like I said, I'll go ahead and get these posted sooner rather than later. I won't wait for the minutes so that, so that people can begin reading these on their own. Um, you know, lots, lots of stuff here that um, takes some, some good information and encourage you to read through that. Um, okay. Yes? Um, just on the uh, workshop and the responses, um, are you going to cover that on the uh, proposed calendar uh, yes. later so uh, I'll just say we had a 
short conversation um, with your availability on other Wednesdays um, during that time period. And uh, that, um, I think that has to be factored in. What I, I personally think you should be uh, at those, which would make Wednesdays difficult. I don't think it's something you can change very easily. So, but um, a high number are Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So maybe we'll, we'll talk about that. Yep, we'll talk about that. All right, and then, um, let's see. So then the last item um, that I want to talk about briefly is um, uh, we had planned, uh, so the Finance Committee met on Monday. Um, and one of the things that the Finance Committee on the agenda was a discussion about um, um, the sharing of council's legal bills. Um, I hope to be able to, to, given the Brown Act, I was not able to agendize something for tonight's meeting, but um, your board can assume that I will agendize for next meeting in December uh, a discussion and an option to possibly take action regarding directing staff, meaning myself and council, uh, to com include complete monthly legal bill billing details um, and waive attorney client privilege except for in some very uh, tight areas, things like personnel issues and that sort of thing. So you will see that on next month's agenda. Um, again, just normally we have our finance committee meetings on a Friday and, you know, would have been last Friday and this meeting's on Wednesday and there's time to get something out of there onto this agenda. This week, this week uh, the meeting was held on Monday and there's just not enough time, given the Brown Act, to get a meeting or a I'm added to the agenda. So you will see that next month. That's the end of my report. <laughs> All right, we'll um, back to the board for questions and this is Are you going to have any public comment? Yeah, uh, stand by, please. Yes, we will. Any other board comments? I just have a couple of questions. I guess you'd ask for feedback. I don't know if you want to know on the step options for study. And I guess. You know, I'm, I'm intrigued by the idea and by doing a third party. We'll see what that costs versus getting a rank out of the engineering and then have a peer review by them. Um, and then also making sure we have it in time for the workshop, right? That's, I mean, it's mid November, early November. I just want to make sure not to rush it, but that we, we have the information. And then just on the environmental on Padre, I think we parked that until we have a new project description. I was in favor of moving forward so that we didn't get caught in a three to four month delay while we were selecting someone. But if we are intent to contract with Padre when it's time to contract with them, I would be in favor of just letting that sit until we're through the workshop process, the process. process. I think they can watch the video from the, from the uh, uh, the workshops to get to get smart when it's time to start work. Um, and then also, I'm just curious on your EHS and planning and development meeting. Were there any what were there headlines or outcomes or next stuff um, that were discussed? Well, I think we're, I think there's some clarification that we need to get. But I might, well, what I was trying to get out of them was uh, so normally when you have a uh, a project is proposed, they go to the utility to serve that project and get what's called a Canon Wilson letter. And my question was to them is, um, if you have a project that's within the current zoning, will you come to the district for Canon Wilson letter? And if it's an upscaling of an existing project, will you come and ask for a Canon Wilson? And for an ADU, will you come and ask for a Canon Wilson letter? And um, I wasn't totally clear on what the answer was. They're gonna, they were gonna um, uh, do some checking and, you know, like with the other ones, I hope to have something, you know, I wanna have something back that says, in fact, I don't right. wanna speak for right. people. Right. This is what we would do for this, this is what we would do for that, so that we all see that. What I, what I think I heard was that the ADU issue is, is a much different issue because state law potentially drives uh, some of that. I think I mentioned, I had a question uh, to council on, on that um, a year or better ago uh, that might have some more, uh, you know, some more, some more work. I mean, I just worked under the logic that if you have a plan that is at capacity, can a planning organization, the county, just approve a project and expect you to serve it? I, I would think that would be no, um, but um, I don't know. So 
we'll, we, we need to get the answer to that. So work at work in progress. Yeah. Okay, so they're they're working on giving us an answer. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to allow public comment on this. These are these are our comments, but um, uh, what I would ask the speakers though is to speak to the content that was talked talked about. And so um, with that, we'll uh, start with uh, Mr. Rohr. Uh, Mr. Rohr, um, I see that you have seven A down as well. And so since it's that's not on the agenda, I just want to make sure you were aware of that. Yes, so. you guys all solved it without me. Uh, so please. <laughs> so, and this should be quick, because I think everyone's on the cover this, um, or pretty much. But you're talking about the planning department. So I think the problem we have here is we don't control the planning, right? Um, like Mike Brady said earlier, uh, uh, nobody here wants growth. I think that's true, but I do think that there are people who probably do want to grow. They probably have a lot of money making them want to grow. Now, I don't know who those people are, but I just bet they're out there. Now, you know, I came old, which makes me really upset, but when I was a little boy, my daddy used to say to me, you know, Big Daddy Jeff Sunroof has always said, I mean, we're going back to Jeff Sunroof, so way back then. He said, he always said that money is the mother's milk of politics. And I believe that. I still believe that. I don't think anyone has changed that from Mr. Under. Um, and I think that that's still out there. So what we understand about zoning is this. I mean, I work in this field, is that it is controlled by the legislative body. And you can't buy the legislative body, right? Democratically, they can come in and change it any time they want. So the county can, can uh, zone us, right? We're not a city. We don't have control. They can zone us any way they want to zone us. And then you know what? They could change it any other time. And there's a lot of pressure on them to do those things. And we see, right, that the power of local government is really mostly about zoning. And that's mostly where they raise funds, right? If you look at who, who donates, right, it's going to be developers. It's going to be, you know, or gas companies. It's going to be folks that, that want something. Um, so I think we do need to be aware that we're putting ourselves at risk to the extent that, and, 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 and I commend Director Farron for checking on this, right, to the extent that we're trying to depend on zoning, it's not a great thing for us to depend on um, in order to maintain the sort of slow growth environment that we have. So I just, I mean, there's a cautionary tale, and I think Director Farron has already spoken to that, so I don't know that I'm adding anything more. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, next speaker is Michelle Wood. I think you all agree, but just wanted to thank um, Director Figueroa and Don for your and taking the initiative to meeting with planning and development. I think that's a really good positive step. Um, and I think if we're building a, a sewer system with the ability to expand, expand on a large property, that puts us at risk. So I, kind of, I want to thank you for exploring it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Savage on the line. We've, uh, and we've got. Ms. Uh, good evening, board members. Um, so first thing, I was really surprised when I heard um, Mr. Savage says that, that um, he wasn't having um, you know, any sort of communication with either Bob Crandall or Lance over at NextGen. And I reached out uh, you know, during his presentation, and I immediately got a hold of um, Bob. And he is uh, unaware of um, any, any issues. Um, he did say that there's been a medical emergency with um, with Lance, and so I'm not sure if maybe um, Guy has been uh, speaking with um, with Lance or not. But they certainly do not want um, you know Las Vegas Community Service Districts to um, eliminate them um, you know at, at this juncture. I know that the last time I spoke to Robert, um, they were getting um, together some numbers and asking questions so that they could submit um, at least a, a part of a, a proposal based upon um, some of the things that are, were uh, put together um, and part of the Scantec uh, design. Um, one of the big reasons I think that you know we really need to not <laughs> eliminate them for the rip from from the list 
is because it is because I think that Los Olivos and the residents in Los Olivos would prefer something that was almost entirely underground versus an above ground, you know, huge, you know, uh, treatment facility. Um, the likes of which either an MBR plant would be, uh, um, or uh, something that Stantec actually proposed in their 30% design project. Um, more importantly, now that we know that LACCO can go ahead and arbitrarily just say that, that Los Olivos is now going to take care of Ballard's uh, wastewater, and it can then tell us to enlarge our own treatment plant if we have one, and if we have, if let's go decide that it had the capacity, that, that Los Olivos had the capacity to treat that wastewater. So, you know, I think that one, you know, don't take them off the list. Um, I just got verbal confirmation tonight that, you know, they're, they're totally still on board with providing whatever information Los Olivos needs. And two, we need to have more options. We shouldn't be eliminating, especially when we're looking at something that is going to be in the community for decades and, you know, a century from now, probably. Uh, especially when we can provide something like a park um, that people can, could enjoy with having all of the wastewater treatment um, actually done below ground in a, in a system like Presby versus having, you know, a huge above ground wastewater treatment facility. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Thank you. And, and thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Savage, was, was that all? No, oh, everyone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then, um, we can move on to the administrative agenda. Any comments, Mr. Savage? Um, I just note uh, for the board, for those who don't spend as much time staring at the various charts as I do, um, you know, if you look at our cash flow, um, our cash flow is beginning to look a little, little light. Um, of course, we haven't seen any property tax payments for the current uh, property tax year, so it's kind of expected. But just for you know, yes, I did notice that we dipped under hundred thousand dollars in our in our checking account. I'll call it. Um, but uh, we do expect to see some funds here in the next several So we should just okay. Uh, well, then uh, item six A is approval of the, the minutes from October tenth. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll move that we approve the October tenth minutes. Motion. I'll second. Second. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that if you're going to take a vote in the public comment? Oh, okay. Public comment at the time. Actually, yeah, thank you. Uh, I did not uh, see any public comment on item six. Was there any public comment on item six? Okay, hearing none. Uh, so we have a um, motion by Director Palmer and second by Director Army. Any board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Uh, item 6B, review and payment of invoices received by October 31st. Uh, any comments, Mr. Savage? None. Okay. I have a motion to approve. Uh, any public comments on 6B? I didn't see any again. I do have a motion for approval of item 6B. I'll do a motion to approve the payments received. Motion, do I have a second? A second. A second. Uh, any discussion from the board? That's uh, so the us. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item carries 5 0. Move on to uh, item 7, 7 A. Um, Mr. Savage is uh, kicking off the agenda, uh, so we will move to item 7 B uh, for your calendar. I'm loading it in just a second, sorry. All right, so um, I, I want to be real clear about this calendar that I'm about to show. This is a draft. It's, it's only a draft. There is nothing finalized here in this uh, particular. Um, uh, it's a spreadsheet at this point, so it's easily changed. But um, I, I did want to give get some input from the board and uh, the public. Sorry. Um, okay, I think you can see that now. 
Um, so I, I spent a little time doing a little draft of uh, what this could look like. I ran past our project management committee to see uh, if they had additional comments. So I have heard some comments from two board members, but this is really an attempt to lay out the calendar for next calendar year. Um, my intent here is to kind of give this board and our newly elected uh, board members uh, an opportunity to look at this and see if there were any kind of glaring issues from their perspective. Um, to make it easier to find, I highlighted, as you can see here in, in red, and I'm sorry I didn't consider people who might be red who colorblind, uh, hopefully that shows up for you if you're, if you're colorblind. Um, my apologies. Um, anyhow, I attempted to highlight where we, where we could potentially have workshops. You'll note that um, I have three dates listed here as, I'll call them, wholly independent workshops, and two dates where um, they're kind of workshops coupled with or after a regular meeting. Uh, you can, so you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm proposing here. Uh, to President Bayram's earlier comment, um, doing our regular meeting Wednesdays once a month is, is not a problem for me. Um, however, adding a, a number of additional Wednesdays would be problematic for me. I would not be able to attend. Um, and that would certainly require your board to um, hire a professional facilitator for those meetings, something that I mentioned last month might be a good idea anyway. Um, I can certainly facilitate or help facilitate those workshops if I'm available and would be more than willing to do that. But if they're on Wednesdays outside of the regular meetings, um, you will need a facilitator. So uh, I took, for those who aren't familiar with this, the way we schedule our regular meetings, um, we generally say, oh, it's the second Wednesday of the month. Not quite. Um, it's really close to that. It's the Wednesday after the second Tuesday of the month. So it's not always the second Wednesday. <laughs> Sometimes it's the third. <laughs> that's how it was written. <laughs> so that's what I did. So if you're wondering why sometimes it's the, you know, it seems like it's the third Wednesday, it's because it's technically the, the Wednesday after the second Tuesday. Um, so <laughs> there's some fun for you. Um, so here's, here's, as you can see here, I've got the month kind of down the left-hand column. I started in December because uh, I wanted to, to make sure that um, this was not a big conflict as well for anybody. Um, our regular meeting is December 14th. In January, this would propose, I'm proposing whether they're on these dates, three meetings. Um, we'd have our regular meeting, of course. Um, we mentioned earlier that uh, Environmental Health and Regional Water Quality Control Board would be here. Um, the following week, as I proposed to here, we would talk about benefit assessments under a 218 proposition. We'd talk some more about the zones. We'd talk maybe in a bit more detail about the options that we've been looking at. Um, and then we'd talk about maybe some scenarios about how this whole thing might actually happen. So that would be sort of foundational, fundamental sorts of stuff so that people could be knowledgeable as we begin looking at sort of the, the engineering side of things. Um, I proposed the next week uh, a discussion about the collection and treatment systems. As we know, you kind of go collection, right, treatment, and then you dispose of the, the remaining water, so effluent. So collection, treatment, effluent would kind of be handled in one workshop because that's kind of the, the engineering side of it. Um, I proposed then that we come back at the next, the regular meeting in February, um, and either finish that conversation or recap it and once you get through, if we've made some decisions uh, as proposed here on the 25th of January about, well, this is where we're leaning toward collection treatment and effluent, then you can begin talking about, well, where does, what kind of room do you need? What kind of space do you need? What's the right site? And we can begin having some of that conversation. Then the 22nd, which would be a workshop, um, we would get into some more of the financing approaches that the board might want to consider, as well as project descriptions. Now, let me pause right there. All of this stuff in red is just Guy's opinion about one path that could be taken through this. Your board may say, you know what, Guy, we don't like that. We'd rather see it arranged like this. I'm totally fine with it. I was just trying to give your board some dates and some chunks that I think were bite-sized enough that people could take in, conceptualize, move on to the next thing, and try and move us along. Um, then in March, by March, we should have the audit findings. I mentioned that earlier. Um, we should be able to finalize the project description if we're able to get the workshops. We may have to have additional workshops in March if your board doesn't get through it, right? If, if more time is needed, we'll take it. Um, the audit findings is important to me in March just because uh, we start with the budget the next month and I want to make sure that anything we learn from the audit is incorporated into the budget. Um, when we kick off the budget, we have our budget workshop, we do the proposed budget, we have our budget hearing, that's those, those meetings that just kind of 
the regular heartbeat of, of uh, a local government operation. And then, as it's shown here, um, I don't have anything particularly scheduled as we get into August, September, October, and November, um, just because there's nothing that we regularly do during those periods. Um, and then we're kind of back to December again. So I wanted to bring this again. Let me recap where I started, or restart where I, where I went. So I'm bringing it to your board. This is not final, right? Um, I just wanted to get it in front of your board to get some input because we do need to bring a resolution that sets the calendar for 2023. And my plan is to bring that next month. It should be, if I get appropriate input, it should be pretty quick, right? It'd be a, a practically a, a, a administrative item. So that's all I have to see. Um, I'll go to uh, comments. I, I, my, uh, my comment is that, um, and, and looking at the uh, the survey, obviously, Wednesday was the highest. Tuesday was next highest. Um, I, I, I really think that you need to be there, um, Mr. Savage. Um, and to that end, I uh, I would prefer to see our, our workshop then on Tuesday. What, what, the, what the survey doesn't tell us is someone might have said, well, yeah, I like Wednesday best, but Tuesday will work too. We, we don't know that. Um, but um, Tuesdays did have a, a relatively high um, uh, response as well. I just think it's important that uh, that you be there, and so I would. I, my preference would be uh, would be Tuesday to, to have you here for those. I, this is a this is a critical element of our moving forward, and I think not having our general manager here would do us a disservice. Any other comments? Yeah, I agree. So my question is. Do you have a deadline for input? Um, uh, well, I, I published the agenda. <laughs> um, you know, the, I, I try and publish the agenda the Friday before the, the Wednesday. So, you know, um, probably around the 7th or 8th of December would be just fine. And we send you an email? That would be great, sure. And they have your email to you, right? It's, it's posted on the website. They can, they can get to it or yeah, send me gm.lcsd at email. Okay, thank you. I'm not addressing this. I just have something I'd like to say. Um, when the district was being formed, um, trying to see if we were going to get the vote to see if we were going to be formed, one of the big proponents in not doing it was taking our sewer all the way to Solvay and tying into their system, and they were gonna increase their plant size and the whole deal. Um, from a construction ability point of view, that cost was far exceeding what it would be to do our own local system. And so, in that respect, I understand everybody's concern about, you know, Ballard and they have to join our system, but from a cost, the county, LAFCO is a public entity, and they, they care about cost, and so, we wouldn't bear the cost of them coming our way, but, but if the system is where Ballard connects, it's, it'd be more cost effective for them to connect the solvay than it would be to come back up our way, upstream, pump everything back upstream, go to our system, expand our system. When they start looking at the numbers, it's gonna be more inexpensive, in my opinion, to take it to the connection point on solvay, which is like the park there. So that's all I just wanted to say. I understand everybody's concerned, but um, so our local system can be small as it needs to be and, and whatever needs to be for us and I don't think we really have to worry. You know, this is a brown end issue because you're talking yeah, about something that is not on the I'm gonna, agenda. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have council address that. Yeah, you, Ms. Cathcart, we've okay. gone outside the scope of the. So oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. would have yeah. been I'm sorry. appropriate on, on the prior. Yeah, on the prior thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Prior I, I just was thinking when they, when they brought it up, I was just listening okay. to that. I apologize. <laughs> is there any workshop? <laughs> Um, okay, well, uh, then I think if the uh, if there's any other comments on that, I can forward it to uh, uh, to, to Mr. Hang on a second, um, to Mr. Savage. Um, I think I, I didn't hear anybody on the board disagree with the Tuesday. Um, so um, according to the survey, Tuesdays or Thursdays look about the same yeah. to either. I mean, yeah. for me, any either either one doesn't yeah. matter. And I think it's going to be important that we be consistent so people know when yeah, it's going to be so that we have agree with that. consistency yeah. to it. Um, I, I had one, um, one other comment on it. I brought this up last time. Um, 
for the uh, the swearing in of the new um, uh, uh, directors. I, I looked at the calendar, and my understanding is, I believe that the uh, elections office would certify the election and forward it to the, well, would forward it to the board. They have to do that by December 8th. Council, do you know is that, is that I think that's it's, it's set by each election, each okay. county. Uh, it's, it's based on their process. Okay. But under state law, uh, new elected officials take office on the first Friday of December. So they have to be qualified, which means they just need to take the oath, they have to post a bond under their organizing act, and they have to do that. But generally speaking, you're able to take office during the Friday, the first Friday of December, and what typically agencies do is whatever their next meeting is after that, first order of business is to swear in new uh, elected officials. So then on Wednesday, our regular meeting of Wednesday, December 14th, should work for that purpose? As so long as the county's got everything done, in okay. time, let's, let's hope so. Well, I see that Mr. Savage has a uh, alternative also for uh, uh, January 11th. If that, I just looked at the calendar now and knowing what I what I, I saw from the election um, and, and whatnot uh, yesterday, uh, I think we'll be okay for the, for the 14th. So, um, okay, any other comments from the board before I go to public comment? Okay, uh, Mr. Savage, we have public comments. Is there any public comment from the public? Emory has a public comment. Okay, okay Ms. Gott. Uh, good, good evening, uh, board members. The only comment I had to, uh, to make was regarding the workshops. You have one one date that you've got scheduled, which is January the 25th, for a workshop where you're going to be talking about the treatment and disposal and, and everything. You know, looking back, we had multiple hours on, on multiple days where you had people come in um, and we had a workshop on Wednesday. Uh, this year, and we discussed, you know, certain uh, systems, uh, such as Arango and uh, the STEP system. So, I don't understand how we can only limit a workshop for this entire discussion to one day, especially if people have not, one, watched the videos from, uh, from previously, and two, if there are um, um, any, any new solutions that are going to be reviewed. So I don't think that we can just have one day with workshops. I think this has to be broken up into multiple days. Um, you know, I, and I, I, I hope that you know, the board feels that as well, given the um, amount of detail that is going to have to be explained. Um, and the fact that you know some people um, may have questions that you know you're going to have to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Um, I think off, off of that, I would uh, I would suggest that Mr. Savage, as you look at the scheduling, um, that we not force that we not force the time. If we need more time, and I think you said that, we'll take more time. And so while I, uh, I think you can, you can have uh, some type of outline, I think we should be prepared to be able to, uh, uh, to be flexible with that and take additional time. Now, I don't know if that means bump the next one down and, and carry over a workshop to the next Wednesday or, or, or kick it to the end and trail it and, and, and um, separate it. Um, maybe that would work if, it, if one of those, didn't, like you got collection treatment and disposal, um, maybe uh, you can give that some thought and, uh, and and we can talk about that. I think flexibility on what um, on how this goes is important and flexibility from the public too, recognizing that if we have uh, something agendized and we carry off and, and then the workshops get kicked down that we have that understanding that that, that, that might happen as well. So, um, Mr. Savage, is your intent then you would take this comment and you will come back with a um, calendar on in December? Okay. That's correct. I'm come back in December with a resolution and setting okay. the calendar for 2023. Very good. Th just as a reminder, particularly with workshops, we can add workshops, right? Yeah. Um, just particularly focused on the regular few days. Yeah. Any other comments from the board? This isn't, this isn't a. Uh, uh, this is for discussion, and we'll have action next next month with what you take back to us. Okay. Uh, hearing that, then we will uh, move on to, I guess, adjournment.
Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. For the last time? For the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you.